Well, good morning, everybody. Jeff Slakey and Spencer Hughes on the Daybreak Show. Right now, we're going to check in with the Economic Development Council of Mason County and find out what's been going on. Jennifer, how are you doing? Pretty good. How about you? I am good and uh, busy week at the EDC. And over the last few weeks, you have been uh, going over, uh, along with all the other EDCs and the Department of Commerce for the state, uh, grant applications and those um, awardees, I guess, uh, grant recipients, some of those na names have been um, divulged, given out to folks uh, much needed around the community. How did that process go? I, I've heard uh, I've heard a couple different things from a different couple different camps that things went well, <laughs> and in certain aspects, there, things could have gone better. Well, it's always tough when you're trying to fit state funding that is meant for one specific purpose into something else. So definitely growing pains with commerce, but we've got our um, allotted 16 approvals. We're moving through the contract process with them, getting that money back in the business. Um, community really kind of helping them out. Uh, it is reimbursable, so that kind of adds a little bit to the headache because you have to show that you've spent the money mm -hmm. on the business side of it before we can reimburse you for the money on the commerce side of it. Um, so that process is moving pretty good working with those businesses. So they'll start to see that that funding come to them. We've just opened up our micro business um, grants. We've got two of them. The EDC is hosting one and Enterprise for Equity is hosting the second one. Um, so we're, we got the final okay from the county. This is the one where the county had funds that were specifically for micro enterprise um, businesses and activities, but they reallocated those for COVID support. So um, there were some emergency funding that came from the Community Development Block Grant. That's got gotten reallocated as well. So we're hosting um, at the EDC, we're hosting a $50,000 grant process. It's on our website. We put it on the front page. It's huge. You can't miss it. If you um, have been in business for a year, if you are low to moderate income, if you are um, five employees or under, you are eligible for a grant of up to 5,000. If you don't need that much, you don't need to take that much, you can just let us know what will help you get through this. The, the more applications we have, the better that process works. And the Enterprise for Equity one, it, ours is open now. We close it on Friday and we'll start distributing those funds um, that following Monday. So that one is going to move pretty quick. The Enterprise for Equity, the requirements are still the same, but you're able to apply for up to 10,000. Um, they've opened it, it's on their website. Um, they've opened it for help to fill out the application. They've got a little bit more involved application process. So for the next few weeks, they are helping those businesses fill out those applications. They will open their application submission part of it on the 22nd of June. So it will only be open for a couple of days. They're hoping to kind of front load it with the trainings and the help that they're doing with the businesses. So being able to get that money into the community, into those very, very small businesses that aren't necessarily equipped to fight duke it out with the this business has 10 employees so what makes the one with one more valuable sure. so we're kind of staggering the the helps that we can to different different groups of people right now so with yours specifically when you start to go through these is this something you pass along to the board of directors to make those decisions or is it based on you in Karin's due diligence on the application process? Or, or where, where do the allocations, who puts the final stamp on that? So it really de depends on which program you're talking about. So Commerce to set it up for their grant um, that we would do a staff prioritized at a local level. Um, we pulled together a panel, really looked at a, a few different things, the jobs impact, retention of jobs impact, um, if there is a different um, ability for them to help other businesses, if you are a business that can support multiple businesses in your area, that, that put you up in a higher prioritization bracket. 
we sent a narrowed down list to, we received over 200 applications. So we sent a narrowed down list to Commerce. Commerce then did their own matrix and scoring around that. Um, and then based on where they ranked from the score they did, those went forward with the, um, micro business relief grants, they are two separate grants. So the EDC's grant, um, since they are smaller grants, we decided to run it more of um, a lottery, put all of the names of all of the applications that we get in. Um, since, again, it's, it's tough because you do have that kind of instinct to even, even narrow down to one to five employees, those businesses with five employees tend to get a higher ranking than those businesses with one. So with um, a smaller amount on this, with a smaller amount allocated to it, we thought that that would be the best process moving forward to take that subjectivity out of it. The Enterprise for Equity one, um, they are doing a prioritization based on the scoring, a little bit like Commerce, but they've pulled together a community leaders panel, pulled together what within that panel are the ideas of, you know, what's the top priority, what's the bottom priority, let's score them, let's rank them. And then the panel on theirs will go through each of those applications um, as they go through. If it's not a clear one, two, three, four, five, if there's some, some cloudiness in there, then the panel will probably come in and say, well, let's go with this business over this business. Here's the reasoning behind that. We are also looking at potential funding. The county um, has uh, 3.8 million that's coming into them from the CARES Act support for local governments they are looking at ways to take a portion of that as well and push it back out into the business community so we're looking at a reimbursable loan or a grant opportunity for that as well so we're working with them on what that criteria is so you kind of you kind of build your grant program backwards you say you know who do we want to to have see it well how do we then through all of these applications, get those people that hit that criteria. And you, you build your, your um, form or your submission application based on how you can potentially score those. So it's a, it's a little bit kind of back and forth until you get the right mix to say, you know, if you're prioritizing jobs, but you have nowhere on that form to say, how many jobs do you have? Then it's not a scorable criteria right. because you haven't asked it of everybody. So, yeah, you it's been a lot of work building them up. You mentioned on one of the grants, it would be $5,000. And if the person or business didn't need that full amount, they could let you know and, and you would get whatever is needed. Is there... Have, have, so when you call somebody up and say, hey, uh, Joe Schmo, congratulations, you got $5,000. How does that work then next step? EDC writes a check to Joe Schmo in that amount, or is that then put into some sort of like fund that Joe Schmo uses to pay his rent, utilities, and payroll? Or mm -hmm. is it up to the, I know you said that you have to remit your receipts, so there's going to be a right. paper trail. So right. you're not going to be buying Cheetos with this. Right. But uh, is there a is there a, a priority or is there something that that you or commerce is encouraging the businesses to use that money on or is it their discretion? So for each of these, since they come from specific pots of money, um, there are uses that you can um, use the grant toward, and then there are uses that are not eligible. So. For like for the commerce grant, you can't, since it came from the strategic reserve fund, it already had a built-in set of parameters that made um, those expenses eligible. You can't use them toward payroll. You can use them toward um, trainings or rent, leases, utilities. Those, those kind of expenses are are pretty much acceptable. So what we do then is we build into the, the process of those expenses that you're sending back to us, once you've been approved, you enter into an agreement with the EDC saying, I will provide you with these documents. We go through those expenses, we look at them, um, 
make sure that they're eligible. Once we get, get that, they're at their $10,000 mark, we send it forward, their funds get released. So we've tried to make that side of it as easy as possible. And they know going into applying for these, it's in all of the documentation that they're going to have to have these documents. So it's not something that we're, we're waiting around for very long. The business has already spent the money. They are still needing that money. So they've got it pretty much ready to go. So we're, we're working through that with them. So in each of these cases, it will be a similar setup. You'll have to enter into an agreement with either the EDC for the micro business relief grants or with the enterprise for equity and say, I, I will submit these expenses. They will be within these eligible criteria. And, and we can move forward with it at that. So once we get all of that, the, the money will hopefully move faster. We're gonna have a conversation next week about phase three. The county is mm -hmm. getting close uh, to submitting the application and, and we're thinking in a week or two, 10 days maybe, um, depending on our COVID numbers that we get to phase three. Um, as I think we're sitting at a pretty good place for our COVID numbers. I've been watching the numbers. We mm -hmm. report on them every day, and especially in relation to other surrounding counties, Mason has done, from what all, all the reports and conversations I've had, Mason has done a, a, a great job. Um, a really good job, yeah. Considering um, the devastation across the world on this thing. Mm -hmm. um, as businesses start to reopen, <clears throat> Uh, business owners are facing a, a tough couple tough questions what, on bringing everybody back, um, bringing them back as business ramps up, and then I'm I'm also understanding that as folks who are still without work, they still are getting uh, that extra six hundred bucks a month from the feds. That's going to end here, I think, at the end of this month, but. Have you had any conversations with business owners or just in hearing in the community that there has been a struggle to return employees because mm -hmm. of either, be, basically what I wanna know is that if people are getting <laughs> 600 bucks a month, if it's keeping them from going back to work. I, I, I hear that in, in, in circles across, in across social media. Well, you definitely see those employees that are using that as a reason to say no to going back to work. But if you're looking at our unemployment numbers, even our initial claims, our continued claims, they're all trending down. Okay. So even if that is an incentive, there comes a point at which that employee realizes that if they're offered a legitimate offer of employment, and you turn it down, you, you are no longer qualified for the level of unemployment that you're at. So there's, there's been some education at the Employment Security Department side of it and on the employer's side of it. How can um, the employers kind of fight back against that and say, no, I gave a legitimate job offer. There are a few cases where, um, the best example I have for it is if you're a single parent and childcare has an open backup, then you are still being impacted by COVID. If you have um, symptoms of or have had and you're still in quarantine, you know, those, those make sense. But if there are things around you that are still impacting you so that you can't to work, that's a legitimate reason. You're still eligible for unemployment. Um, generally, though our employers are working with their employees that are in that situation. So um, there's, a, there's a definite hopefulness when we're working back and forth with each other in that I'm giving you a legitimate opportunity. That funding will run out. And there is, um, the employers can contact ESD and say, you know, X, Y, Z, I offered him a job. He said, no, he wants to keep the $600 that's going to trigger the same kind of thing as when they they have to self-report and say, yes, I was offered a job, and no, I turned it down. Hmm. They have to have a legitimate reason for it as well. So you are seeing it, but it's not, um, and it is definitely impacting our businesses because 
now they're going when where they thought okay i have this pool of workers that are still ready to work they're now having to transition into um hiring you know let's do some virtual job programs let's see what we can do to get other people in because they have to fill that position um, if there's a refusal to come to work because of safety issues that's a different one that triggers things so there's there's quite a few levels in there but um, our unemployment kind of return to work numbers are growing and our unemployment numbers are going down those claims numbers so you're looking at um, it, it, I think it, it will all just come to a head as they get closer and closer to realizing that that six hundred dollars is gone. You've yeah. got to you've got to prep for it moving forward. Yeah. And, and I, and, and my gut tells me that this always comes up in these situations. Mm -hmm. I'm trying to think back to 0809, and I feel as though there was an additional stimulus or additional so many weeks of unemployment that were given out to folks and. The same thing people were saying, well, that's just, you know, folks are going to not want to go back to work. And while that's probably true with, I mean, listen, everybody has folks at their job that don't, that they don't want to be there. Right. And those were probably the folks that would take that money and then maybe not continue on. Mm -hmm. That's my own, that's my own thought on those kind of things. But um, the pride in work, the pride in your contributing to the company. I think there's a lot of that, especially in Mason County. Mm -hmm. And so when, when, when folks, I, I just don't get the sense that there's the uh, shiftless layabouts, you know, just right. going, ah, we got this Over one. <laughs> <laughs> Yay, give me more money. Yeah. Overall, I'd say you're right. I'd say we are a very optimistic community. We like to be engaged. We like to, to really kind of help where we can help. Um, so your bulk of people are that, but there are always the, the extras and it, it does make it a little harder for our businesses to kind of ramp back up to where it is that they are. So just really as a, as a community member, be cognizant of that, um, help those businesses however you can help them shop with them call them up and say you guys are doing a great job how can i help that reach out that personal or that personal touch that you've got that you can really just show to them that we are here to support you it's not just just this it's it's that same mindset i get with the imposter fraud that's been happening with unemployment as a whole most people are amazing they are working through the long wait times doing what they can and you get this one person and it's that one person that you always remember or that mm -hmm. one that one thing that always kind of impacts the rest of it so um i am very proud of our businesses and where they've moved forward and held steady and are now ramping back up and, and moving to a place that they feel more solid but um yeah, if, if we can just reach out to them, just let them know that, that we're here for them, that we support them. And same with our employees. If they know that, that that's happening, that that business is ramping back up, that it's moving forward, that the business owner is doing what they can to make it a safe place, they're more likely to transition back into working. We just got to be a little bit aware of sometimes it might be harder to get back on that schedule. Yeah, oh, that's <laughs> you know, those exactly 8 right. mornings come pretty fast. That's exactly <laughs> right. Well, I know Jennifer too. Speaking of those, you are in those uh, briefings about what's happening around the county. And I know uh, when I talk with Sheriff Salisbury, Dave Windham, and all those folks there, uh, that group of folks that they have gathered um, has really made some good impactful decisions uh for the county and mm -hmm. i think help kept a lot of us safe so that's that's pretty cool head to the website choose mason you can find all the links to uh more information on the uh, grants and programs that are available during coronavirus mm -hmm. and next week we'll get karen on and we'll talk about phase three and uh go through it like a checklist of what employers need to have uh, ready because you never know when someone um, might come by and ask to see your 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 plans right or or just we're moving into summer you're going to see a lot more traffic 
where phase three allows us to be a lot more closer to fully open. You've got 75% in a lot of those categories for a lot of our businesses. So you get really close and you can see that end. We just yeah. have to be there for three weeks and then we'll move into phase four. So. Wow. Oh my goodness. <laughs> that would be something. Jennifer, good to see fully you. Fully operational. Fully <laughs> operational. That means I might have to Start coming into the office and right. Yeah, exactly. Wait, you're not you're not in the office. Your background looks just the same. Well, that's because <laughs> I brought it home from the office yesterday. <laughs> All right, Jennifer, good to see you. You as well. And Thanks we, for having me. Yeah, for sure. We'll check in again.